Serious, Redditors that have adopted unadoptable animals, what's their story, and yours? He was a 10 year old black tomcat who had bounced around fosters and the shelter for 2 years and needed a special diet. In all that time he was available for adoption but nobody had even inquired, and he needed out of his current foster ASAP since an elderly cat owned by the people had suddenly taken a dislike to him. We took him in and were warned that he was so terrified of people he'd likely hide under the furniture for 2 months before we'd see him. This seemed to be right on the money since the moment his crate was opened he zoomed under the bed and stayed there for the rest of the day and into the night. We left food and water under there and a litter tray in the corner, but there was no coaxing him out for love nor money, so we'd have to sleep with the terrified cat under us. Then came 3am, when he decided to sit on my face and demand petting. The little guy would never have to go back to the shelter again. Cat tax. Pay up. LOL. Our humane society had a bonded pair of beagles, who had to be adopted together. They were there for 7 months because no one wanted two at once. My husband volunteered at the shelter, I had finally convinced him we should get a dog, when he turned around and convinced me we should get two. There's hardly any room for me in the bed at night now. That was a power play, and you lost, you were supposed to counter by suggesting you adopt the whole shelter. I love butthole cats. Our orange fluff was at the shelter for 6 years and was adopted out and returned no less than 4 times. We've had him a full year plus now and he's just the most precious creature. An absolute heck cat, yes, but also sweet and super adorable. His most recent habit is sleeping under the covers with his head stuck out like a human. Freaking cute. Me and my family fostered dogs 9 times and the last one we ended up adopting after half a day. We suspect she was abused verbally and physically. She was so extremely scared of men for probably 2 years. I think we have had her for a little over 2 years and she's not that scared anymore. Being around my dad and brother was bad. She eventually loved and adored my dad quickly though but any quick sudden movements and noises scared the bajesses out of her. My dad has a friend who is 6 feet 7 I think and she was scared out of her mind when she met him but she loves him now. She's such a cutie and she is so playful and adorable. Dog tax is required. When I was a kid I took a pet rat from a friend whose mom didn't want it in their house anymore. A lot of people hate rats but he was an awesome pet. They're smart and friendly and surprisingly trainable. I was a weird lonely kid back then and he got me through a rough time. I still miss the little dude. R.I.P. Amelia had been in the shelter for close to 6 months. Reason being she was a very large female dog and was very shy and unaffectionate. She saw me and walked into my arms for a hug. I've never seen a dog hug someone before. She didn't change much. Still anxious and shy, but she adores my mom and me. Every time I visit home to see her, she still insists on sleeping right next to me. She's spoiled rotten. I never wanted a puppy. When I made my argument to my folks for getting a dog, I insisted we visit the shelter to find an older dog who needed the home more. I can't imagine buying a puppy I'm always going to be an adopter. Through luck and choice, we've pretty much only ever had borderline and adoptable dogs. Borderline because we are the suckers who fall in love with them. My childhood dog set the tradition. A shepherd mix riddled with BBs, terrified of men and with a ferocious demeanor that made most shelter visitors wary of even passing his kennel. We found a criminal hiding in our basement a week or two prior, and my dad worked 24 hour shifts, so off we went to get a dog. When I as a wayfish and bossy 4 year old approached his cage and told him to sit, he did. He stopped barking, calmed down and sat. He had training, and I was about the least intimidating human he'd seen in a long time. After a while of me chatting at him in the way only an excited little kid can, he lay down and got comfy, then started scooching closer and closer to the chain link until I could scratch him. Mum signed the papers and he came home with us that day. That dog, he came home and said thanks by eating my bedroom door. He wouldn't let my dad down the hall into my room for months. He wouldn't eat if anyone could see him. Couldn't go on walks in the daytime because men are people who exist. Then I got hurt. Fell out of a tree and knocked the wind out of myself. Dad rushed over and carried me inside. What a crisis for the dog. His human was hurt. And the big scary man was holding her. But helping and the only way to console tiny human was to set aside the fear and approach. 
And so he did, because tears needed to be licked and goddamn it he was just the dog for the job. My dad was so excited that the dog warmed up to him even that little bit, that later that day, he dropped a cheeseburger and didn't even notice. And the next day, he must have still been excited because he dropped a little steak. And so it began. The dog started trusting, started accepting food when people were in the room, so long as you didn't look, started joining in on family cuddles, and by the end of his time with us, that dog was sleeping with his head on my dad's pillow, snoring right in his face, letting me feed him with a fork, and the only person he truly hated was the neighbor who loved shooting out in the back swamp, but I would too if my only experience with guns was a hip full of pellets. This was beautiful. I grew up in a family that specifically adopted the unadoptable and so when it came time to have my own it felt weird bucking the trend, although one kitten slipped through when we took his mum. Anyway, we lost a year old feral who clearly hadn't developed properly and his twin was not the same so we decided to hunt out another feral. I rang the cat's protection and asked to see their most hissy, spitty, and lovable messes. They delivered. Hidden away from people with no clue was a teeny tiny feral black ball of smell. She was beautiful 4 weeks kittened on permanent high alert and hissed and scratched all the time. I had to be on isolation because she's viciously attacked others, which was mental because she was tiny. I know it sounds insane but we took the leap and brought her home a week later. They insisted that she would never ever be a domestic cat. First few days she would charge at the older cats like a rocket when we tried to integrate and she wouldn't let us touch her. She had masses of long black fur and it was only a matter of time before it matted beyond repair. So, I whacked on the oven gloves put on my thickest dressing gown with a second to hold her in and set up the combs. Managed to grab her and pin her down. I thought she was going to take my eye out at one point. Flipped her into the dressing gown and forcible combed her. She just instantly switched to her purring. Nursing. Dribbling mess or adorable. Completely relaxed. Even rolled over to let me get her tummy. It was insane. I've had cats hide for literal years before they become normalish but this thing. I just don't think anyone had ever even tried. And if I hadn't called she would have been kept away from everyone because no one had the time to try to brush her and that was all she needed. It's been just over a year and her and the twin are best buds and play all day. When people come over she hides under the bed and only trusts me and my FH but my god once the comb is out. She's there. Best risk we ever took. Cat tax. We were the third owners of our dog. She just didn't warm up to anyone. We bought her home. And for over a year she wouldn't even look at us when we came in the door. We had to coax her outside for walks with meat treats. We had to hug her when we washed her to stop her shaking. We had to let her know it was okay to eat and give her lots of time to get through it. She's 8 now. And a different dog. She trots up to me when I get home and leans on me for a huge cuddle. She weighs about 80 pounds. It's the best. She nose bumps me just to remind me she's here if I haven't paid her enough attention. She loves kids, all other animals and people of every walk of life. Under all those nerves and fears of being left behind, she was the world's greatest ever dog waiting to be uncovered. I wish I could have 30 more years with her. These last 6 have gone by way too fast. I am a reptile amphibian fish arachnid guy, so when I say I had no idea what I got myself into I mean it. Anyway, a friend of mine called me asking to borrow my truck. When I showed up I was faced with a 7 year old buckskin horse that my friend had found on a recently abandoned farm and had received the go ahead to take her in. This poor girl had been mistreated since day 1. Her hooves were severely cracked, broken, and misshapen. She had been kicked by another horse resulting in a broken leg that was left untreated and never healed correctly. She was malnourished, underweight and had a whole host of parasites and health issues. On top of all that she won't let us anywhere near her. She almost kicked my friend in his face and tried to bite me several times as we were trying to get her in the trailer. After finally getting her in the trailer we got her to her new home. A wide open space with plenty of grass. 
trees and an open barn. The vet unfortunately was bitten a few times trying to examine her and almost left if we hadn't begged them to stay. We got her the meds she needed and put her on a diet to bring her weight up. After spending a good amount of time trying to warm her up to people and eventually she would let us come up and touch her without being bitten or her running away. We got a farrier out to look at her hooves and over time he slowly trimmed and corrected her hoofs the best he could. After they were sufficiently healed he shooed her. And about a year later she was healthy, happy and well mannered. Unfortunately we could do next to nothing about the messed up leg but it didn't seem to slow her down. Just means she would never be able to be ridden or used for anything weight intensive but I don't think she cared. She now spends her days running around on a farm. All of this started because my friend heard that she was gonna be put down due to her state of being at the time. My grandmother had a cat when I was growing up that terrified everybody. It was a demon. It was an alley city cat that my aunt randomly found in the CBD one day and somehow managed to bring it home. It was a gorgeous white cat with blue eyes. No scars or anything. It was that good a fighter. From the moment she brought it home the only people that could touch it was my aunt and my grandmother. Most other people couldn't even look at the cat and it would attack them. I've personally seen it jump over a wall to pick a fight with two German Shepherd dogs. It would routinely chase small dogs down the road. It hated small children and would attack my brother often. It did once and my dad threw a brick at it. It shrugged off the brick then got angry. It also once tried to pick a fight with a bus. That sucker ended up dying of old age. Everyone was glad to see it go except my aunt and my grandmother. Frick that cat. I love cats though. I would pay good money to see a cat pick a fight with a bus. I went into a doctor kitten I had seen online. I ended up getting her and her brother as he was the only one in the litter who hadn't been adopted. He was super friendly and sweet right away and she was more hesitant. The first night I had her she crawled up in the middle of the night and slept with her face on my face. The shelter had asked me to follow up in a few weeks and so I updated them and said she was great and they told me they had been worried because she was not a friendly kitten at all. For her first few years she wouldn't really let anyone pick her up but me. But now when people are over she seeks it attention. Not nearly as sad or as big of a turnaround as a lot of these stories. I just think she is territorial and likes her space on her terms. Neither have ever bitten or scratched me. I adopted a dog about 4 years ago. Her name is Maple. And while the shelter didn't tell me about any problems, she later turned out to have quite a few. I suspect she or her mother were beaten with some sort of weapon. Because she knows what a weapon is. Knife. Sword. Gun. ETC. And will get really scared and upset if someone approaches her holding one. Even if it's a toy. When I first adopted her, she was scared to death of men and would submissive pee every time my dad talked to her about her. When my dad had a tall, deep voice friend over for dinner, Maple wouldn't even enter the room. She just hid under a chair with her tail tucked until he left. I also think she may have been taken from her mother too early. She was only 3 months old when I got her, and for the first year of having her, she had severe separation anxiety. If I left the room, she had to go with me. If I was out of her sight for more than 30 seconds, she would start crying and looking for me. She's pretty much better now. Although she still has a fear of weapons and won't go near deep voice men. But as I type this she is sleeping on the couch peacefully. Waiting for me to go to bed so she can go to bed too. I sort of wish I knew who adopted her siblings so I could see if they had the same fears triggers. But that likely won't happen. Regardless, if your dog is named Aspen or Fern. And you've had them for about 4 years. HMU. If I recall correctly Fern and Maple are both black dogs with tan markings, while Aspen is tan brown. Likely some sort of Dachshund Manchester Terrier mix. Adorable curly tail. A few years back, my mom and I adopted a cat from our local humane society after being catless for a few years. We went in and were checking out the different cats when my mom said she found one that she liked. They told us that someone had found her abandoned in a dumpster and that she was really skittish and shy and had been at the shelter for some time. My mom absolutely fell in love with her and we took her home that day. For the first year we had her, she hid from us and would actively avoid any room we were in. At the time, it was a little frustrating but we gave her time to adjust and man, am I glad we did. We've had her for almost 12 years now and she has become the sweetest cat I've ever had. 
My mom and I have had terrible luck with cats but we finally managed to find a wonderful one. Her name is Daisy, but I call her Bun, and I wouldn't trade her for the world. I live on my own now and don't think I could survive without her. She sleeps in my bed every night and constantly climbs in my lap or follows me around the house. Whenever I'm getting ready for bed, she'll climb onto my chest and throw herself down next to my head, so that her face is pressed against mine. Not to mention, she is a purring machine. Bun is honestly such a blessing and I'm glad we never gave up on her, despite her being so shy and a little cold for the first year. I feel like a proud parent when I talk about her because I just adore and love her so much. For anyone interested, there's a picture of her in my post history. My fiance adopted a troubled cat before we met. She is very shy and does not like being handled at all. My fiance likes to pick her up and make her dance etc. She hates this. I understand how she likes contact. I just hold my hand still and let her rub up against it. Sometimes she nibbles my arm. And sometimes the nibbles hurt. But she has never drawn blood. She likes to sleep on my side of the bed. She is my familiar. I love her. Please advocate on your cat's behalf Ray your fiancé's behavior. The poor cat will be traumatized. Please help him see that it is making your cat really unhappy and that she is not there as amusement. Thank you for showing her love. She clearly really appreciates you. My mother's cat, Banana Boat was at our local humane society for most of her 1.5 years of life. Adopted. Returned. Repeat. She was found on a boat as an abandoned kitten with her leg nearly severed. They sewed it back on. She is very talkative and a bulldozer. She will quite literally push through anything and make lots of noise to get what she wants. It's cute. But other people mistook this as hunger and unhappiness and fed little banana boat the tuxedo cat until she became obese. My mother adopted her and banana boat instantly loved everybody. Not sure why so many people returned her. Nana is a lovely kitty and provides a ton of love. This story isn't so sad. It's more confusing because I am not sure what was wrong with her. Maybe most people want an independent cat, but she definitely needs to be included in everything. Sorry for any typos. Mobile and fat fingers isn't a good combo. My cat broke my heart. He was a feral rescue cat I took for two weeks so he would get used to living inside. He was kicked out of his previous foster home for attacking their other animals, and one of the adults, and most guests. I had one temperamental and bossy rescue dog who also had issues but knew she would not let a cat boss her around. My cat never became noticeably better tempered. However, he and the dog ended up being really close. They would sleep next to each other in the sun or in front of the fire and when dog died, he wouldn't leave me for days. I was checked on every hour. He terrified my relatives, attacked my guests, left permanent scars on me and killed a lot of birds, rats and mice. He also was afraid of the rain and insisted I sat with him in the hall during bad storms. He would sometimes sleep in my hair and tore all my pillowcases to shreds. He waited for me every day and no other cats or animals were allowed near me. He became seriously ill with arthritis, diabetes, a fused back and bad teeth. I medicated him twice a day, watched his diet and nursed him through his lows and diabetic comas. He would get his morning cuddles and head rubs on the floor until he had enough and bit me. Every day, we had a connection and I love him so much. I hate coming home because he isn't here. I miss him every day. Hugs. Black thumb cat who drools when he purrs, loudly snorks when he eats, and can't just be petted but must actively and sometimes aggressively press against your touch. He is mine and only mine and very clingy. He's very sick and so my parents have been watching him because they're retired and I am all alone and so so lonely. I miss my snorker. Adopted a 10 year old dachshund who was incredibly aggressive towards people. His then owner told me this story. That dog was his parents prized possession. They would show him at dog contests and he would win a lot of prizes. He was gorgeous. They treated him very well. One day, he did not give any more details than that and it was pre-internet days. His dad killed his mum in front of the dog. The dog was traumatized and a couple of years after the event. Which brings us to the time of my adopting him. He would still howl and cry for hours after hearing sirens. Be it ambulances, fire trucks or police. They basically had him in a room away from anyone ever as he would lash out at anyone trying to touch him. So I took him in in a heartbeat. We were 5 people in the house and 3 other dogs. 
the first couple of days I left him to his own devices. He was basically cowering behind an armchair. I would throw food at him so as not to approach him and stress him. At night, I made sure the door to the living room was closed so the other dogs couldn't come to hassle him. Every day after that I would come a little nearer to him, talking to him softly. On day 5, he initiated contact with my other dachshund, a miniature half his size. Together they went to the garden and met with the other dogs. From there he had become part of their pack and was approachable by the people of the household on the condition of not surprising him with physical contact. Until he heard a siren again, he went back to howling and shaking and looking so miserable. So I forcefully took him in my arms and told him I had his back. He was safe here. Something broke the rut he was in and he cuddled with me for the longest time. He was pretty much at ease in the house by then and would come for a cuddle if he heard a siren. And then one day he didn't. He didn't need the reassurance anymore. All in all it took a month for him to behave like he'd always been mine and had no hang ups about his past anymore. He passed one week shy of his 20th birthday. He took a chunk of my heart with him when he left. But you know what? He's very welcome to it. Got a street dog one time as a kid. When my mom first brought it home it had no fur and was basically just skin and bones. She was obviously abused because if you touched her she would turn around and attack to defend herself. After about a year she was looking healthy however, she had bad seizures and there was little we could do to help her. After about 2 years the vet thought the best idea was to put her down as she was having a seizure every day at least. Mine's not quite as lost cause as some of the other stories here, but my cat Lychee was generally considered a forever shelter cat. She didn't get along with the other cats, would bite and claw at people who tried to pet her, and was very vocal. I was in my first apartment after college and I knew I needed a pet. When I first saw her and read her background card, I felt sad for her. She had been found in the nearby city, obviously had been on the streets for a while but was also obviously not a feral cat. I'm a bleeding heart and have a severe soft spot for animals that no one else wants. I started petting her in the crate and she began chewing on my fingers. Not too aggressive, but I could see why some people would be scared away because of it. In any case, I decided she would be mine and I immediately adopted her. After a short period verifying my background, when I went to show the woman which cat I wanted, her response was you want that one. She was something of a salty cat, likes to pick fights, thinks biting is a way to show affection, likes to roll around in her own litter, but, she's also a mosh now, loves to sleep with me, specifically on top of me, which I've discovered I quite enjoy, she still bites as a sign of affection, and she has a number of quirks, I describe her to others as having autism, because she doesn't seem to understand normal socialization, but I love her. My mum fell in love with a year old tortoise shell kitty at the shelter. She was marked as not good for families with young children or other pets and demonstrated this marker when she was introduced to my brothers. She had clearly been abused, she was skittish and was just terrified of people and other cats. Mum adopted her anyway. Her first act at our house was to climb in the air vent in the side of the deep freezer and hide up in the motor, only coming out to eat and pee when no one was around. Both times a new kitten came home she was caught in a weird state of terrified and wanting to care for the baby. Eventually after a few months she would get used to the new cat and stop attacking them. She's about 10 now, and she's mellowed out in her older years. She now tolerates my kids, she's really cuddly and affectionate, and she clearly loves the other cats in the house. Hardly the same scared creature that mum brought home all those years ago. 20 or so years ago my dad and I went to the local kill shelter to adopt a pit bull puppy he'd heard about. Turns out she's 10 years old not 10 months and not good with kids, poor thing. So we're still looking. Dogs are all going nuts and it seems we aren't getting a dog. Then a scraggly pup calmly walks up to the fence, puts up his paw and makes a low wooing sound at us. Looked like a husky chow mix. Red body with a grey face, legs and the tuft of his tail. Half starved, hair a mess covered in ticks. Staff explains he's a good dog but wouldn't interact with potential owners. He'd been homeless and was wary that they were putting him down tomorrow and if we wouldn't at least take it out of the yard and get to know him. We took him home and within 48 hours he accepted us. Turns out he was Chow Wolf and our old vet refused to treat him, so we found a new vet. He doubled in size and was our little destroyer of worlds. 
named him Reggie cause he's red and grey, ate anything that wandered into the yard, tore up burglars twice and was the most loyal butthole, never managed to get him 100% trained, he was always a bit wild, he liked our next door neighbor more than us, often had to be drug out of the dog park, a male picked a fight and Reggie was going to finish that crap, he lived his final years in rural AR often running loose and getting in all kinds of trouble, you were my best friend. Serious, redditors that have adopted unadoptable animals, what's their story, and yours? He was a 10 year old black tomcat who had bounced around fosters and the shelter for 2 years and needed a special diet, in all that time he was available for adoption but nobody had even inquired, and he needed out of his current foster ASAP since an elderly cat owned by the people had suddenly taken a dislike to him. We took him in and were warned that he was so terrified of people he'd likely hide under the furniture for two months before we'd see him. This seemed to be right on the money since the moment his crate was opened he zoomed under the bed and stayed there for the rest of the day and into the night. We left food and water under there and a litter tray in the corner, but there was no coaxing him out for love nor money, so we'd have to sleep with the terrified cat under us. Then came 3am, when he decided to sit on my face and demand petting. The little guy would never have to go back to the shelter again. Cat tax. Pay up. LOL. Our humane society had a bonded pair of beagles, who had to be adopted together. They were there for 7 months because no one wanted two at once. My husband volunteered at the shelter, I had finally convinced him we should get a dog, when he turned around and convinced me we should get two. There's hardly any room for me in the bed at night now. That was a power play, and you lost, you were supposed to counter by suggesting you adopt the whole shelter. I love butthole cats. Our orange fluff was at the shelter for 6 years and was adopted out and returned no less than 4 times. We've had him a full year plus now and he's just the most precious creature. An absolute heck cat, yes, but also sweet and super adorable. His most recent habit is sleeping under the covers with his head stuck out like a human. Freaking cute. Me and my family fostered dogs 9 times and the last one we ended up adopting after half a day. We suspect she was abused verbally and physically. She was so extremely scared of men for probably 2 years. I think we have had her for a little over 2 years and she's not that scared anymore. Being around my dad and brother was bad. She eventually loved and adored my dad quickly though but any quick sudden movements and noises scared the bajesses out of her. My dad has a friend who is 6 feet 7 I think and she was scared out of her mind when she met him but she loves him now. She's such a cutie and she is so playful and adorable. Dog tax is required. When I was a kid I took a pet rat from a friend whose mom didn't want it in their house anymore. A lot of people hate rats but he was an awesome pet. They're smart and friendly and surprisingly trainable. I was a weird lonely kid back then and he got me through a rough time. I still miss the little dude. R.I.P. Amelia had been in the shelter for close to 6 months. Reason being she was a very large female dog and was very shy and unaffectionate. She saw me and walked into my arms for a hug. I've never seen a dog hug someone before. She didn't change much. Still anxious and shy, but she adores my mom and me. Every time I visit home to see her, she still insists on sleeping right next to me. She's spoiled rotten. I never wanted a puppy. When I made my argument to my folks for getting a dog, I insisted we visit the shelter to find an older dog who needed the home more. I can't imagine buying a puppy I'm always going to be an adopter. Through luck and choice, we've pretty much only ever had borderline and adoptable dogs. Borderline because we are the suckers who fall in love with them. My childhood dog set the tradition. A shepherd mix riddled with BBs, terrified of men and with a ferocious demeanor that made most shelter visitors wary of even passing his kennel. We found a criminal hiding in our basement a week or two prior, and my dad worked 24 hour shifts, so off we went to get a dog. When I as a wayfish and bossy 4 year old approached his cage and told him to sit, he did. He stopped barking, calmed down and sat. He had training, and I was about the least intimidating human he'd seen in a long time. After a while of me chatting at him in the way only an excited little kid can, he lay down and got comfy, then started scooching closer and closer to the chain link until I could scratch him. Mum signed the papers and he came home with us that day. That dog, he came home and said thanks by eating my bedroom door. 
He wouldn't let my dad down the hall into my room for months. He wouldn't eat if anyone could see him. Couldn't go on walks in the daytime because men are people who exist. Then I got hurt. Fell out of a tree and knocked the wind out of myself. Dad rushed over and carried me inside. What a crisis for the dog. His human was hurt. And the big scary man was holding her. But helping and the only way to console tiny human was to set aside the fear and approach. And so he did. Because tears needed to be licked and goddamn it he was just the dog for the job. My dad was so excited that the dog warmed up to him even that little bit. That later that day, he dropped a cheeseburger and didn't even notice. And the next day, he must have still been excited because he dropped a little steak. And so it began. The dog started trusting. Started accepting food when people were in the room. So long as you didn't look. Started joining in on family cuddles. And by the end of his time with us, that dog was sleeping with his head on my dad's pillow. Snoring right in his face, letting me feed him with a fork, and the only person he truly hated was the neighbor who loved shooting out in the back swamp. But I would too if my only experience with guns was a hip full of pellets. This was beautiful. I grew up in a family that specifically adopted the unadoptable and so when it came time to have my own it felt weird bucking the trend, although one kitten slipped through when we took his mum. Anyway, we lost a year old feral who clearly hadn't developed properly and his twin was not the same so we decided to hunt out another feral. I rang the cat's protection and asked to see their most hissy, spitty, and lovable messes. They delivered. Hidden away from people with no clue was a teeny tiny feral black ball of smell. She was beautiful 4 weeks kittened on permanent high alert and hissed and scratched all the time. I had to be on isolation because she's viciously attacked others, which was mental because she was tiny. I know it sounds insane but we took the leap and brought her home a week later. They insisted that she would never ever be a domestic cat. First few days she would charge at the older cats like a rocket when we tried to integrate and she wouldn't let us touch her. She had masses of long black fur and it was only a matter of time before it matted beyond repair. So, I whacked on the oven gloves put on my thickest dressing gown with a second to hold her in and set up the combs. Managed to grab her and pin her down. I thought she was going to take my eye out at one point. Flipped her into the dressing gown and forcible combed her. She just instantly switched to her purring. Nursing. Dribbling mess or adorable. Completely relaxed. Even rolled over to let me get her tummy. It was insane. I've had cats hide for literal years before they become normalish but this thing. I just don't think anyone had ever even tried. And if I hadn't called she would have been kept away from everyone because no one had the time to try to brush her and that was all she needed. It's been just over a year and her and the twin are best buds and play all day. When people come over she hides under the bed and only trusts me and my FH but my god once the comb is out. She's there. Best risk we ever took. Cat tax. We were the third owners of our dog. She just didn't warm up to anyone. We bought her home. And for over a year she wouldn't even look at us when we came in the door. We had to coax her outside for walks with meat treats. We had to hug her when we washed her to stop her shaking. We had to let her know it was okay to eat and give her lots of time to get through it. She's 8 now. And a different dog. She trots up to me when I get home and leans on me for a huge cuddle. She weighs about 80 pounds. It's the best. She nose bumps me just to remind me she's here if I haven't paid her enough attention. She loves kids, all other animals and people of every walk of life. Under all those nerves and fears of being left behind, she was the world's greatest ever dog waiting to be uncovered. I wish I could have 30 more years with her. These last 6 have gone by way too fast. I am a reptile amphibian fish arachnid guy. So when I say I had no idea what I got myself into I mean it. Anyway, a friend of mine called me asking to borrow my truck. When I showed up I was faced with a 7 year old buckskin horse that my friend had found on a recently abandoned farm and had received the go ahead to take her in. This poor girl had been mistreated since day one. Her hooves were severely cracked, broken, and misshapen. She had been kicked by another horse resulting in a broken leg that was left untreated and never healed correctly. She was malnourished, underweight and had a whole host of parasites and health issues. On top of all that she won't let us anywhere near her. She almost kicked my friend in his face and tried to bite me several times as we were trying to get her in the trailer. After finally getting her in the trailer we got her to her new home. A wide open space with plenty of grass. 
trees and an open barn. The vet unfortunately was bitten a few times trying to examine her and almost left if we hadn't begged them to stay. We got her the meds she needed and put her on a diet to bring her weight up. After spending a good amount of time trying to warm her up to people and eventually she would let us come up and touch her without being bitten or her running away. We got a farrier out to look at her hooves and over time he slowly trimmed and corrected her hoofs the best he could. After they were sufficiently healed he shooed her. And about a year later she was healthy, happy and well mannered. Unfortunately we could do next to nothing about the messed up leg but it didn't seem to slow her down. Just means she would never be able to be ridden or used for anything weight intensive but I don't think she cared. She now spends her days running around on a farm. All of this started because my friend heard that she was gonna be put down due to her state of being at the time. My grandmother had a cat when I was growing up that terrified everybody. It was a demon. It was an alley city cat that my aunt randomly found in the CBD one day and somehow managed to bring it home. It was a gorgeous white cat with blue eyes. No scars or anything. It was that good a fighter. From the moment she brought it home the only people that could touch it was my aunt and my grandmother. Most other people couldn't even look at the cat and it would attack them. I've personally seen it jump over a wall to pick a fight with two German Shepherd dogs. It would routinely chase small dogs down the road. It hated small children and would attack my brother often. It did once and my dad threw a brick at it. It shrugged off the brick then got angry. It also once tried to pick a fight with a bus. That sucker ended up dying of old age. Everyone was glad to see it go except my aunt and my grandmother. Frick that cat. I love cats though. I would pay good money to see a cat pick a fight with a bus. I went into a doctor kitten I had seen online. I ended up getting her and her brother as he was the only one in the litter who hadn't been adopted. He was super friendly and sweet right away and she was more hesitant. The first night I had her she crawled up in the middle of the night and slept with her face on my face. The shelter had asked me to follow up in a few weeks and so I updated them and said she was great and they told me they had been worried because she was not a friendly kitten at all. For her first few years she wouldn't really let anyone pick her up but me. But now when people are over she seeks it attention. Not nearly as sad or as big of a turnaround as a lot of these stories. I just think she is territorial and likes her space on her terms. Neither have ever bitten or scratched me. I adopted a dog about 4 years ago. Her name is Maple. And while the shelter didn't tell me about any problems, she later turned out to have quite a few. I suspect she or her mother were beaten with some sort of weapon. Because she knows what a weapon is. Knife. Sword. Gun. ETC. And will get really scared and upset if someone approaches her holding one. Even if it's a toy. When I first adopted her, she was scared to death of men and would submissive pee every time my dad talked to her about her. When my dad had a tall, deep voice friend over for dinner, Maple wouldn't even enter the room. She just hid under a chair with her tail tucked until he left. I also think she may have been taken from her mother too early. She was only 3 months old when I got her, and for the first year of having her, she had severe separation anxiety. If I left the room, she had to go with me. If I was out of her sight for more than 30 seconds, she would start crying and looking for me. She's pretty much better now. Although she still has a fear of weapons and won't go near deep voice men. But as I type this she is sleeping on the couch peacefully. Waiting for me to go to bed so she can go to bed too. I sort of wish I knew who adopted her siblings so I could see if they had the same fears triggers. But that likely won't happen. Regardless, if your dog is named Aspen or Fern. And you've had them for about 4 years. HMU. If I recall correctly Fern and Maple are both black dogs with tan markings, while Aspen is tan brown. Likely some sort of Dachshund Manchester Terrier mix. Adorable curly tail. A few years back, my mom and I adopted a cat from our local humane society after being catless for a few years. We went in and were checking out the different cats when my mom said she found one that she liked. They told us that someone had found her abandoned in a dumpster and that she was really skittish and shy and had been at the shelter for some time. My mom absolutely fell in love with her and we took her home that day. For the first year we had her, she hid from us and would actively avoid any room we were in. At the time, it was a little frustrating but we gave her time to adjust and man, am I glad we did. We've had her for almost 12 years now and she has become the sweetest cat I've ever had. 
My mom and I have had terrible luck with cats but we finally managed to find a wonderful one. Her name is Daisy, but I call her Bun, and I wouldn't trade her for the world. I live on my own now and don't think I could survive without her. She sleeps in my bed every night and constantly climbs in my lap or follows me around the house. Whenever I'm getting ready for bed, she'll climb onto my chest and throw herself down next to my head, so that her face is pressed against mine. Not to mention, she is a purring machine. Bun is honestly such a blessing and I'm glad we never gave up on her, despite her being so shy and a little cold for the first year. I feel like a proud parent when I talk about her because I just adore and love her so much. For anyone interested, there's a picture of her in my post history. My fiance adopted a troubled cat before we met. She is very shy and does not like being handled at all. My fiance likes to pick her up and make her dance etc. She hates this. I understand how she likes contact. I just hold my hand still and let her rub up against it. Sometimes she nibbles my arm. And sometimes the nibbles hurt. But she has never drawn blood. She likes to sleep on my side of the bed. She is my familiar. I love her. Please advocate on your cat's behalf Ray your fianke's behavior. The poor cat will be traumatized. Please help him see that it is making your cat really unhappy and that she is not there as amusement. Thank you for showing her love. She clearly really appreciates you. My mother's cat, Banana Boat was at our local humane society for most of her 1.5 years of life. Adopted. Returned. Repeat. She was found on a boat as an abandoned kitten with her leg nearly severed. They sewed it back on. She is very talkative and a bulldozer. She will quite literally push through anything and make lots of noise to get what she wants. It's cute. But other people mistook this as hunger and unhappiness and fed little Banana Boat the tuxedo cat until she became obese. My mother adopted her and Banana Boat instantly loved everybody. Not sure why so many people returned her. Nana is a lovely kitty and provides a ton of love. This story isn't so sad. It's more confusing because I am not sure what was wrong with her. Maybe most people want an independent cat, but she definitely needs to be included in everything. Sorry for any typos. Mobile and fat fingers isn't a good combo. My cat broke my heart. He was a feral rescue cat I took for two weeks so he would get used to living inside. He was kicked out of his previous foster home for attacking their other animals, and one of the adults, and most guests. I had one temperamental and bossy rescue dog who also had issues but knew she would not let a cat boss her around. My cat never became noticeably better tempered. However, he and the dog ended up being really close. They would sleep next to each other in the sun or in front of the fire and when dog died, he wouldn't leave me for days. I was checked on every hour. He terrified my relatives, attacked my guests, left permanent scars on me and killed a lot of birds, rats and mice. He also was afraid of the rain and insisted I sat with him in the hall during bad storms. He would sometimes sleep in my hair and tore all my pillowcases to shreds. He waited for me every day and no other cats or animals were allowed near me. He became seriously ill with arthritis, diabetes, a fused back and bad teeth. I medicated him twice a day, watched his diet and nursed him through his lows and diabetic comas. He would get his morning cuddles and head rubs on the floor until he had enough and bit me. Every day, we had a connection and I love him so much. I hate coming home because he isn't here. I miss him every day. Hugs. Black thumb cat who drools when he purrs, loudly snorks when he eats, and can't just be petted but must actively and sometimes aggressively press against your touch. He is mine and only mine and very clingy. He's very sick and so my parents have been watching him because they're retired and I am all alone and so so lonely. I miss my snorker. Adopted a 10 year old dachshund who was incredibly aggressive towards people. His then owner told me this story. That dog was his parents prized possession. They would show him at dog contests and he would win a lot of prizes. He was gorgeous. They treated him very well. One day, he did not give any more details than that and it was pre-internet days. His dad killed his mum in front of the dog. The dog was traumatized and a couple of years after the event. Which brings us to the time of my adopting him. He would still howl and cry for hours after hearing sirens. Be it ambulances, fire trucks or police. They basically had him in a room away from anyone ever as he would lash out at anyone trying to touch him. So I took him in in a heartbeat. We were 5 people in the house and 3 other dogs. 
the first couple of days I left him to his own devices. He was basically cowering behind an armchair. I would throw food at him so as not to approach him and stress him. At night, I made sure the door to the living room was closed so the other dogs couldn't come to hassle him. Every day after that I would come a little nearer to him, talking to him softly. On day 5, he initiated contact with my other dachshund, a miniature half his size. Together they went to the garden and met with the other dogs. From there he had become part of their pack and was approachable by the people of the household on the condition of not surprising him with physical contact. Until he heard a siren again, he went back to howling and shaking and looking so miserable. So I forcefully took him in my arms and told him I had his back. He was safe here. Something broke the rut he was in and he cuddled with me for the longest time. He was pretty much at ease in the house by then and would come for a cuddle if he heard a siren. And then one day he didn't. He didn't need the reassurance anymore. All in all it took a month for him to behave like he'd always been mine and had no hang ups about his past anymore. He passed one week shy of his 20th birthday. He took a chunk of my heart with him when he left. But you know what? He's very welcome to it. Got a street dog one time as a kid. When my mom first brought it home it had no fur and was basically just skin and bones. She was obviously abused because if you touched her she would turn around and attack to defend herself. After about a year she was looking healthy however, she had bad seizures and there was little we could do to help her. After about 2 years the vet thought the best idea was to put her down as she was having a seizure every day at least. Mine's not quite as lost cause as some of the other stories here, but my cat Lychee was generally considered a forever shelter cat. She didn't get along with the other cats, would bite and claw at people who tried to pet her, and was very vocal. I was in my first apartment after college and I knew I needed a pet. When I first saw her and read her background card, I felt sad for her. She had been found in the nearby city, obviously had been on the streets for a while but was also obviously not a feral cat. I'm a bleeding heart and have a severe soft spot for animals that no one else wants. I started petting her in the crate and she began chewing on my fingers. Not too aggressive, but I could see why some people would be scared away because of it. In any case, I decided she would be mine and I immediately adopted her. After a short period verifying my background, when I went to show the woman which cat I wanted, her response was you want that one. She was something of a salty cat, likes to pick fights, thinks biting is a way to show affection, likes to roll around in her own litter, but, she's also a mosh now, loves to sleep with me, specifically on top of me, which I've discovered I quite enjoy, she still bites as a sign of affection, and she has a number of quirks, I describe her to others as having autism, because she doesn't seem to understand normal socialization, but I love her. My mum fell in love with a year old tortoise shell kitty at the shelter. She was marked as not good for families with young children or other pets and demonstrated this marker when she was introduced to my brothers. She had clearly been abused, she was skittish and was just terrified of people and other cats. Mum adopted her anyway. Her first act at our house was to climb in the air vent in the side of the deep freezer and hide up in the motor, only coming out to eat and pee when no one was around. Both times a new kitten came home she was caught in a weird state of terrified and wanting to care for the baby. Eventually after a few months she would get used to the new cat and stop attacking them. She's about 10 now, and she's mellowed out in her older years. She now tolerates my kids, she's really cuddly and affectionate, and she clearly loves the other cats in the house. Hardly the same scared creature that mum brought home all those years ago. 20 or so years ago my dad and I went to the local kill shelter to adopt a pit bull puppy he'd heard about. Turns out she's 10 years old not 10 months and not good with kids, poor thing. So we're still looking. Dogs are all going nuts and it seems we aren't getting a dog. Then a scraggly pup calmly walks up to the fence, puts up his paw and makes a low wooing sound at us. Looked like a husky chow mix. Red body with a grey face, legs and the tuft of his tail. Half starved, hair a mess covered in ticks. Staff explains he's a good dog but wouldn't interact with potential owners. He'd been homeless and was wary that they were putting him down tomorrow and if we wouldn't at least take it out of the yard and get to know him. We took him home and within 48 hours he accepted us. Turns out he was Chow Wolf and our old vet refused to treat him, so we found a new vet. He doubled in size and was our little destroyer of worlds. 
named him Reggie cause he's red and grey, ate anything that wandered into the yard, tore up burglars twice and was the most loyal butthole, never managed to get him 100% trained, he was always a bit wild, he liked our next door neighbor more than us, often had to be drug out of the dog park, a male picked a fight and Reggie was going to finish that crap, he lived his final years in rural AR often running loose and getting in all kinds of trouble, you were my best friend. People with pets that are really not bright, what are your stupid pet stories? I had a farm cat when I was a teenager that loved to climb up and sit on the roof. Problem was, he had the habit of rolling over for a tummy rub whenever he saw a person, so it was a distressingly common occurrence to walk near the house and have him roll right off the roof. You'd think after the first three times he'd have learned, but no, he lived a long life despite himself. I had a Siamese mix that used to do the same thing off the fireplace mantle, every, dang, day. I have a 6 year old cat that still doesn't know how doors work, when you open the door to let her out, she runs behind it and tries to go through the crack by the hinges, she'll stand there meowing at you like I can't fit through here, do something. Yet our kitty will sit at the patio door, which is open, and meow to get in, Jesus Christ kitty, just walk through. My dog likes likes to play fetch with tiny objects. She's brought me a blade of grass, a tiny stone, blossom, a seed, stuff so small that it just sticks to her tongue and she has to lick you a few times to get it to stick to your leg. Then she just nudges it until you attempt to throw it. I once had a dog that would spend all day chasing shadows and reflections on the walls. When he caught them he would just sit and lick the wall. He could have easily licked the wall for hours on end. My sister is a veterinarian and they once had an office dog named 38 cents because that's how much change they recovered from his stomach. I wonder if that's how 50 cent got his name. This isn't unique because I've seen other dogs do it. When she was a puppy my dog would bury her toys in the middle of the room. She'd dig the carpet, making a hole. She'd then meticulously place the toy in the hole, then bury it with her paws and nose. Shoveling the supposed dirt over it, there'd just be a ball in the middle of the floor but she was satisfied it was buried and she'd trot off happily. I was always amazed at my uncle's dog. I gave her a treat one week and she took it and buried it. A few weeks later she came back, looked at me, then ran and dug up her treat and ate it like the happiest dog ever. So far, my cat Jack has fallen head first into a kitchen trash can and a toilet, fell off a windowsill after biting his tail. Tried to jump on my bed like it was a trampoline, only to fall off of the bed, get his head stuck in a glass of beer, get his fat butt stuck in my boot, long story, and get the crap kicked out of him by Misty, my other cat, because she caught him sleeping in her favorite cat bed, there is a good reason why his nickname is Barker Chan. Get his fat butt stuck in my boot, long story, tell all. My wife heard the cat screaming like it was being mauled by a lion. She went outside and looked under the house to see the cat, being mauled, by a lizard on her paw. Mom, it's touching me, gross. My little cat got stuck under the couch because she forgot how she got under there. I had to rescue her because she wouldn't stop screaming. She's beautiful and very sweet and loving but the inbreeding shows. I got a sister like that. I have a really old, really stupid cockatiel named Stina. Every Monday when the garbage truck comes the noise of it wakes her up, but because the cover is over the cage she can't see anything and so she starts screaming. It's like she's thought, oh crap, I've gone blind. She likes to waddle around the floor with my other cockatiel, Alex, who is her mate, but she'll walk behind the curtain and then freak out because she can't see Alex and thinks he's vanished. So she starts screaming again. She likes to chew through perches, while she's standing on the perch. This weekend I bought a new doormat for the balcony, but I can't use it because for some reason Tina thinks this freaking doormat is the most terrifying thing in the world. She just froze in place with her crest up and wouldn't move until I took the doormat away. My dog continuously, usually more than once a day, almost every day for years, goes into a room, closes the door, and then a few hours later barks at us to open it. She hasn't learned yet. Yep, we have to leave our bathroom door shut when we're not home because our lab mix will get in there and accidentally shut the door with his big lab deadly tail. 
Then he freaks out because he can't get out. My dog used to scratch his ear so much with his back foot that he would hurt his ear and then bite his own foot to teach it a lesson. I have a corgi Aussie mix. He's got the corgi length and is stubby. Whenever we get a big snow, he'll waddle up to a tree and lift his leg to pee. Throws his whole body into the motion. Teeters. And then slowly falls over onto his side. He'll casually get back up and waddle back to the sidewalk like nothing happened. I don't know how he doesn't constantly fall over while peeing. He doesn't just casually lift a leg. He commits like he's doing parker. I knew a woman who owned an elderly basset hound. Male. She said finally they had to make him wear an elastic hairband around his waist so that could get his willy off the ground. Also out of the snow. One day. After we had gotten 7 or 8 inches of snow, my cat decided to be a brave adventurer and dash out of the door. She knows she absolutely hates snow, but always does this. I must also note that she has no clue what the frick to do when she gets outside. She starts making this ridiculous meow scream that is mind-blowingly hilarious. She runs out, jumps into the snow and disappears. I'm sitting there letting her learn her lesson. I hear a muffled meow scream as she very very slowly lifts her head up above the snow. Her mouth stays wide open, her eyes pure and total regret, and continues to stare at me doing this meow until I came and picked her up. She did it again an hour later. So and I have two cats, Carl and Lucy. I've had Carl for much longer. He's my bro, always follows me. Sleeps on my face every night, massages my scalp when he's hungry in the early morning. I love the little guy, he's a dwarf, more than anything. But Lucy has made me realize over the last few months that either Carl is an idiot or Lucy is brilliant, it's definitely the former. Lucy nudges not quite closed doors open with her head. Carl tries and usually fails to wrench them open by putting his paws under the crack and prying or pushing. Often opening and closing the door multiple times as he tries to figure it out. Lucy watches patiently as I poo, knowing she'll get her cuddles soon. Carl jumps on my lap, assuming it's belly rub time. Lucy slices open thin food liners, potato chip bags, mostly, and feasts. Carl gets his head stuck inside the bag and stumbles around the apartment completely blind. I can't tell you how many times I've gotten home from work to find him with an empty bag of Doritos on his head. Lucy hangs out and watches the water fall during showers. Carl hops in and gets soaked for a brief moment before realizing his error and bolting. Almost every freaking morning, Lucy watches birds and rabbits from the window. Carl pounces at them, straight into the window. Lucy naps on my lap, knowing she'll get some love in. Carl naps on my neck, apparently not knowing he'll get removed. Lucy toys with the Christmas ornaments. I know it's early, but the so treats decorating the same way I treat Destiny or Diablo. Carl gets trapped inside the tree for several hours at a time. Lucy drinks from the toilet if left open. Carl falls into the toilet if left open. Lucy got fixed last week and has a cone. Carl somehow managed to get it off of her and stuck on his own head, backwards. I guess there's nothing particularly funny, just a lot of small, dumb things that make me chuckle on a daily basis. Lucy got fixed last week and has a cone. Cole somehow managed to get it off of her and stuck on his own head, backwards. Cannot stop laughing. When my dog was a puppy she was convinced our TV was a window. When we lived in our apartment, behind our TV was the stairs up to the bedrooms. More than once when we were watching shows with animals and them she would run up the stairs to right behind the TV looking for those animals. Not long after we'd first gotten her we were lying on our bed watching her drink water. It was a sight to see. Water went everywhere, and she'd gone on so long my husband called her name. She looked up mid-drink and choked herself on the water. She also had never seen stairs before we got her. So she watched our other dog who had exceptionally short legs hop up and down the stairs. So until the day we moved, this long-legged, clumsy as heck, can't lift a leg to scratch without falling over German Shepherd hopped up and down the stairs, too. When I got my husky, I already had a 12 year old lab mix. My lab would climb up onto beds and couches since he could no longer jump. Even though I've seen my husky jump over our entire couch while playing, he still slowly climbs one paw at a time to get on the bed or couch to lay down 7 years later. We had an adorable greyhound called Bertie, who was sadly put to sleep last month. 
Definitely the Kevin of the canine world. One time we were having some fencing replaced in the back garden. And when we got back from our walk the workman had taken down all of the fencing but left the gate standing. Bertie stood by the gate waiting for it to be opened despite the fact that he could have easily walked round either side. I tried pushing him round, nope, just wagged his tail and looked at me, walked round myself and tried to let him, nope, I had to actually open the gate, whereupon he happily trotted through, the workmen were pee themselves laughing, he'd also regularly wake himself up with his own farts and stare accusingly at us, like hey, who threw that firecracker and woke me up miss him every day. My cat won't use the litter box. He poops in the potted plants around the house. But not the real ones. He only poops in the fake plants. And that's why his name is Dipshit. My roommate has a cat that can't take a poop in the litter box. The cat just sits next to the box and puts his front paws in. Thinks he is in the clear and poops all over the floor. Same cat. Different story. To solve the problem my roommate got a higher translucent box which would force the cat to completely sit in it to poop. He didn't get it though. So my roommate picks the cat up, places it in the box, and the cat completely freaks out. Doesn't realize there is a box around him and starts to hit the box with his head trying to get out. Funny stuff. Last story. Still same cat. So my roommate had this litter box with a cat flap. Cat doesn't realize he is supposed to go inside but instead hops onto the box and poops. Thing is, the poop scoop was on the litter box and the cat completely crap all over the handle. Still not sure if this was a stupid or brilliant pet move. At least the poor thing is trying. Could be like my cat. If she thinks her litter box is too dirty she'll come find me, stand on the opposite side of the room, and do her business while looking me straight in the eyes like this is your fault. She's right, it is my fault. As long as I'm not lazy and clean it regularly we have no issues. My cat doesn't know how to bury his poop. He just hits the wall of the poo box repeatedly then leaves the poop on top without so much as remotely disturbing the litter around the poop. I have a cat that does that too. Then his brother goes in after him and buries it for him every time. My cat will randomly attack her back legs. She'll be grooming herself. Then her leg will get in the way and accidentally boop her nose or something. So she'll bite it. Then get confused that her paw hurts and start kicking out at whatever hurt her. Her face. And it turns into a bitty, scratchy cycle until she gives up and looks sad. I had a bird sitting outside my window and my cat wanted to get it. She started sprinting full speed, slamming face first into the glass. To make things worse, she didn't seem to learn from it. My cat did this for 2 years with a mirror. My cat likes to play with plastic easter eggs. She picks a half up into her mouth, and trots around with it, yowling all the while, with the egg functioning as an amplifier. One year we got the kids these big eggs full of candy, and eventually she found one and tried to play with it the same way, except when she picked it up, it flipped up over face and covered her eyes. She panicked and started running around like AW my god I am blind, clanging into the baseboard heaters and whatever else, it was hysterical. She finally dropped it, and stood there dazed. I can see again I tease a miracle. Oh look an egg and picked up the egg and did it again, and again, and again. I finally threw the dang thing away because she would do it in middle of the night. Must not die laughing. At work. Must adult. Rusty has so many. He regularly puts his head in the way when our other dog is peeing, and thus gets pee all over his head. We have gotten good at pulling him away in time, but sometimes the other dog still gets him. This dog cannot find his way out from under a blanket. If you put one over him, he'll struggle with it for about 30 seconds, then he just gives up and lays down. He won't move until someone comes to take the blanket off. He loves chasing tennis balls, but if he doesn't see where it goes when it's flying through the air, there is no hope he will ever find it. That dog could search the backyard for hours, and he wouldn't find a ball in front of his face. He regularly tries to go through spaces too small for him, and he gets stuck. We have a glass table. Rusty loves to sit underneath it and stare up. If you drop a piece of food onto the glass table, he searches the floor for a couple minutes. Not ever understanding why there isn't food on the floor. He is 9. He's had some time to figure it out. We thought my cat was blind. She would be sitting with us. 
and then walk into the other room and start crying because she didn't know where we were. When we called her name she would stop crying, come back, and sit with us again. Her vision is fine. She's just dumb. IDK if it's stupid cause it's a herding dog but my Australian Shepherd tries to herd any frickin vehicle that enters the driveway and by herding mean running around the vehicle full speed while nibbling at the tires until the vehicle either stops or drives out of its invisible fenced area. I've got to board a collie, she will try to herd literally anything, people, cars, bikes, other dogs, birds, sticks, even a pond once. She's never been a working dog and has no idea what she's doing, but that doesn't stop her. The last two collies we had were exactly the same. One of my cats jumped down from the breakfast bar and landed on her face. She didn't even put her paws out to stop herself, just went splat. Same cat also decided to walk past the remains of fresh chicken my mom had left out to cool so the animals could have some later. Instead of the chicken she ate the asparagus instead. If you left a cauliflower out shed eat all the leaves. From you Rob Edlife. My dog Charlie refuses to move if you put a sweater on her. She will literally just stand still. We tested for how long, and the answer is 8 hours. She finally moved when the sweater was removed. So they found her off switch. Not mine, but I lived with him. But his bulldog was chasing my dog and my dog ran around a bar stool and the bulldog had this brilliant idea to jump through the bar stool legs. Above the footrest cross support. Got halfway in and got stuck and the bar stool fell over with him in it. Never seen a dog so panicked in my life. I couldn't stop laughing for 20 minutes. My best friend's dog couldn't walk without prancing when he was a puppy. And he couldn't stop himself in time from running into walls. We liked to crank up indestructible disturbed and watch him prance around. It was hilarious. <laughs> While chickens are not bright, I have a giant roo named Roger. He was trying to visit his lady friend who was inside the coop. He was outside the cooperative. The coop has little glass windows at about chicken eye level. Roger was frantically pecking the window and throwing himself at it in order to gain entry, right next to the open door. So to help out, I grabbed him and placed him directly in front of the open door, to which he let out an exasperated complaint and ran back to the window, pecking and flailing with all his chicken might. We repeated this about 5 times until the girl chicken eventually left the cooperative. My German Shepherd, Wilma, chased a bird through a window. My Irish wolfhound, Betty, ran through a glass door that had just been replaced the day before. My son Bernard, Captain, once lifted his mammoth paw and intentionally ripped through a screen door so he could go outside. So his isn't so much stupid as it was spiteful and crappy. My dogs don't do well with the concept of see-through barriers to the great outdoors. It's becoming systematic. My cat Myrtle has a thing for the shower curtain. I was showering a couple of weeks ago and she dived at it, she ended up in the shower with me covered in foam. Shower was slippery and no matter how fast she tried to run she was going nowhere. I get the impression it was one of those I'm only ever going to do that once moments. My cat does basically the same thing. She goes in between the fabric and plastic curtains and likes to watch me shower pour at water droplets through the plastic. She's a special one. My boyfriend has even called her my shower buddy she does it so often. Found my dog licking an unconscious baby rattlesnake in my backyard. Stopped her, put the snake in a jar, then marveled at my dog's complete lack of animal instincts. My terrier likes to whip garter snakes into the air. We walk along these old railroad tracks and they like to bask on the metal. The snakes are harmless, but I'll be walking along. Then suddenly a snake will come flying up at my face. He has unerring aim for a tiny tufted moron. TL. DR. Large cat miscalculated his jump to the windowsill. Fassa planted the wall. I have a 20 pound black Persian can named Sherman. Sherm is fairly inbred, if I understand his family history the way I do. Not the brightest candle in the box, but I love his derpy butt dilly. So anyway. He comes into the room and I can tell he wants to jump up onto the windowsill to look outside. 
I'm sitting on the couch which is against the wall and perpendicular to the window. Now he could have easily jumped up to the sill from the floor but in his lazy little mind he decided to jump up on the couch and then the window. The only problem is that I'm sitting on the couch and in his line of trajectory, I see him wiggle his fat butt and make a run for it. In his attempt to jump over my lap, he misses his footing, manages to scratch the crap out of my leg, and ends up faceplanting right into the wall under the window, and he hits it hard. Just imagine 20 pounds of cat and full speed slamming into the plaster wall. I'm pretty sure the house shook. He wasn't seen for a while after he bolted out of the room, licking his wound and tending to his shame. My cat is very lazy and overweight, so I bought one of those motorized toys that spin around a stick with a feather on the end of it. I think it was recommended by Jackson Galaxy. I put the cat next to the toy and turn it on. She just sits there, not moving at all, while the stick spins around repeatedly hitting her in the face. She finally looks at me like I am abusing her and lets out a little cry. I threw the toy in the garbage. We got one of these for our 3 year old before we had our kitten. She would kitten flop and lay in one area and bat at it when it came to her. Nice summer day, everyone outside, meat on the grill, and the dogs on their tie downs. A couple of burgers stay in the fire too long and get burned. Toss them to the dogs. Our older dog, a border collie chow mix, looks at his treat, walks over to sniff it, and eyeballs the months old puppy across the yard. Once he sees that the pup can't get to his treat, he lays down to let the meat cool. This puppy is long and all limbs. We were told he was a lab retriever mix, but we aren't sure since he is white with black spots. Whatever breed this goofball is, He's large for such a young pup and not due to stop growing anytime soon. He tears around the house with all the floppy rubbery agility of any other puppy and spots the treat. He leaps, mouth engulfing the burger. Hot, hot, as his mouth gets burned, he jumps back and hunkers down. He starts barking at the burger, I swear. I could see my older dog chuckling. I once watched my cat panic at the sight of a sock that had been on the floor for 3 weeks. He turned, and bolted straight into the couch, which made him panic, and bolt right into the same part of the couch, both times head first. When we first got him, we lived in this huge, slightly dilapidated, freezing cold house with tile floors in every room. Pikachu's favorite game ever was to sprint across the house, jump onto an area rug and skid across the floor until he rammed into the walls. Every rug, in every room, every day, we finally just all bought slippers and gave up on the rugs. I came home with chic fillet once, and after I ate it all of it I got up and left the room for a minute. I come back to see my poor, stupid dog stumbling around the room with an empty chick fil a bag stuck on his face, bumping into crap and trying to shake the bag off his head. I can remember few times in my life I've ever laughed that hard. That's what you get for trying to steal my food, you little sucker. We had to put him down earlier this year at the age of 15. I miss him. I have two dumb cats, Frisky and Pesky. They were born feral, under a friend's porch. Frisky used to think he was a dog. He would play fetch with and occasionally swallow thrown hairbands and we once caught him drinking out of the toilet. And Pesky used to think he was a baby. He would lie in a doll bed and my little sister would dress him up and he would drink out of a bottle. Here are their stories. Frisky and the cell phone charger. One day, Frisky discovered a plugged in cell phone charger. He decided to lick it. He was promptly shocked and jumped back with a meow of pain. So he did it again. Shock. Meow. And again. Shock. Meow. At this point the charger was taken away so he wouldn't electrocute himself. Cats vs Christmas tree. We recently purchased a new Christmas tree due to cat damage. They love to bat at the ornaments. Normal, climb on the tree. Normal but destructive. And eat the light bulbs. Seriously. We lost an entire section of the tree lights because they ate so many. To this day we're not sure if they actually swallowed the glass or just spit it out. Frisky and pesky is great escape. We keep our cats indoors because we're worried they might go out exploring and get lost and never come home. Our cats, being feral, tend to enjoy the outdoors. We mostly save their desires by letting them out on the screened in porch or with a leash. One day, someone left the porch door open, and Frisky and Pesky made a break for it. They didn't get far. Frisky stuck close to the house and meowed for help. 
while Pesky made it to the other side of a neighbor's house and then huddled in a corner in fear. Both cats were safely returned, and it seems they've learned their lesson. Veterinarians of Reddit, what is one thing you wish people would know understand about their pet? About their pet, the best one I know is one I heard a while ago. You have your life, your job, your friends, your family to provide your social interaction per day. Your dog only has you. Interact with your dog for more than 5 minutes per day and maybe your dog will not go out barking every 5 seconds. I heard something similar. That logic is what urged me to make the habit of taking my dog for 4-5 walks a day. He can interact with other dogs and with the world around him that way. If your pet eats your weed stash, let the vet know. They are not going to call the police. They need to know everything they can to diagnose your pet. Don't complain about your dog not having boundaries when you're literally feeding them scraps off your plate at dinner time. That's 100% on you. Vet in the UK. 1. The sounds that flat-faced dogs make are not normal. 2. There is no such thing as Ishi is just a bit stiff but Ishi is not in pain. It's just her old age if your dog cat is stiff or slowing down on walks then it's very likely they are in pain. 3. On the same note pain relief is important. Yes all pain relief has side effects just like all human medication does. But please don't let your pet suffer. 4. If your vet says your dog cat needs a dental then please follow their advice. I've seen some horrendous mouths covered in calculus with teeth falling out and the poor animals had to put up with it for years because he she is still eating so his her teeth must be fine. Number 2 is one of the worst ones. Your pet doesn't have to be limping, yelping or non-ambulatory before they should get some pain relief. RVT here. Exotic animals. Reptiles. Birds. Small mammals such as rabbits, hamsters, guinea pigs and rodents may be easy to acquire and assumingly easier to take care of but most of these animals have very specific housing and dietary needs that need to be met and require enrichment. Also, not every veterinarian has experience with exotic animals, and exotic animal medicine is sometimes at a premium but is still necessary. I've met a lot of people who get a small mammal or a small bird for like $20 from the pet store and then won't pay for medical care because it costs way more than the pet was purchased for. Vaccines you get at the drugstore on the corner or the feed and tax shop are not as good or the same as the ones you get at the vet. Just because your dog is scratching its ears does not mean it has ear mites. Your cat is not urinating outside the box because it's a jerk. It might be. It probably has an infection. Not eating for 3 days while vomiting and having diarrhea is a huge deal. That 5 pounds chihuahua or even 80 pounds lab can't lose that many fluids without having any intake and be okay and neither would you. RVT here. There are siru menet. 1. It is not cute or sweet to have an obese pet. It can cause joint issues and heart disease among many things. Stop showing love through overfeeding, especially human junk food. 2. Dogs are living creatures who need preventative medical care just like you do, and sometimes they get sick like you do. If you can't contribute the bare minimum to take care of them, maybe you should think again about owning one. 3. Get your puppy its dang distemper parvo vaccines. Adding on. Heartworm prevention costs much less than treatment. Not a vet but my mom is. One thing that really frustrates her is the myth that neutering a cat will make them fat and lazy. It reduces the amount of calories they need which means they need less food and or more exercise to maintain the same weight. Cats generally get less energetic as they get older regardless. But most will still perk up if you make the effort to wave a toy in their face every so often. I'm a vet. 99% of patients are okay with drop-off appointments due to COVID. The number of clients claiming my pet has severe anxiety. I can't believe you're making him go in alone is quite high. Almost all pets are fine. And the ones who aren't fine, I've allowed owners in the building to help. There's been two since March who actually were in distress despite people complaining daily about it being an issue. Also I think people need to learn more about the medical process in general. Tests are usually required to make a diagnosis. Sometimes even with tests the diagnosis is grey. Sometimes spending all the money will not guarantee success. Many times there's not a magic shot I can give to fix it. Don't buy a dog only because you like the way it looks. Huskies and most sorts of shepherds are working dogs. 
They need lots of activities to be happy and they often turn aggressive if they do not get enough of it. On this note, look into any breed of dog you want to buy and what it needs. Egg. Jack Russells are terriers and were bred for hunting foxes on farms. They need adventure, play, space and regular exercise. Just because it's small and looks cute doesn't mean you can keep it cooped up in an apartment. This is why there are so many yapping unhappy aggressive dogs around annoying everyone's neighbors. I am a vet. I wish people just even had a basic understanding of dog or cat body language. FFS. The number of videos posted on reddit of animals in distress and it's tagged as oh my little fluffster is so cute when he plays or whatever makes my blood boil. That kind of moronic ignorance is what gets children bit by the pet dog or the cat who is now dying because the owner had no idea of the signs 4 months ago. Edit. Cheers for the awards kind strangers. I don't know why you did, but you are cool peeps. Oh man. The dog and baby videos kill me. You've got a dog with flat ears and curling lips trying to back away from a kid and the poster is all look how sweet Porkchop is with Maddie. Mom. That's not sweet. Your dog's about to decapitate your child. I wish that they understand that they have a live creature that need all type of cares not just medical but environment enrichment a correct and health feeding and why not even emotional care but the average pet owner think that him her just have. A teddy bear or something. It took my husband years to really understand our cat was a being with its own personality, preferences, habits, and likes routines. Our cat is not just her pet, she is a being with her own wants and needs. If you want to cuddle and she doesn't, respect that. She was his first pet. If you see a stray cat with a cleanly clipped ear tip do not take it to her shelter. Either take it home to live with you or leave it on the street. Clipped ears mean they were caught neutered spayed by the city county and released this is a way to control cat populations and over time protect wildlife they compete for resources with fertile cats without adding to the population in many cities stray cats are more likely to be adopted from the street than in the shelter if the cat is taken to a shelter they cannot legally release it because it is now abandoning the animal that cat will be euthanized or at best absorbs resources until it finds a home if your cat or dog was hit by a car and is whining and limping, when you bring them in and get asked when the accident happened, the dang answer best not be oh, 4 5 days ago, but I haven't had time to bring him in. Source equals wife is a surgical vet nurse. Ripping your cat's claws out to preserve your furniture is absolutely disgusting and inhumane. Don't justify it by saying that at least you're giving him her a good home. You're depriving the animal of one of the core essence of being a cat. I only found out recently that it's like amputating the tips of your fingers from watching Kyle Hill. Thankfully none of our family pets have had to endure this but it's still a horrifying thought. Vet here. Here's my best advice. Condensed. 1. Thin pets live longer than fat pets. Google a BCS chart and make sure your pet has a visible waist and palpable ribs. No crash diets. 2. Dental disease is way more serious than you think. Get the scale and polish. If we have to extract teeth, and believe me, we would prefer not to, they will still be able to eat. 3. Get your pet a series of cartrophan, or Zydax, or pentazon polysulfate, injections when they turn 8. They help slow down the progression of arthritis and are safe and cost effective. 4. If your cat is stressed at the vet, take home some gabapentin to put on her food before her next visit. She will be safe, happy, and calm, and the vet will be able to examine her more thoroughly. 5. Know what's toxic for your pet. Definitely don't have lilies in the house if you have a cat. 6. Discuss finances. Your vet wants what's best for your pet, and is obligated to recommend all your best options. But if you tell us what you can afford we can usually work with it. 7. You deserve a vet you trust. If you don't trust yours, find one that you do. 8. Put your 24 hour vet's address into your Google Maps GPS favorite so you don't have to find it in an emergency. 9. High quality kibble is fine unless your vet tells you otherwise. 10. You can almost definitely give your cat a pill. Ask us for tricks. 11. Be nice. We are human and we all care intensely. Even if we hate you, we probably love your pet. Bit depressing that you felt number 11 was required. Honestly, people suck.
RVT, not vet here. Just because you can't afford your pet's medical care, does not mean we are horrible people for not treating for free. Vet's offices are not non-profit. Your pet's wellness is your responsibility. Quit laying the blame on us when you can't won't pay for needed care. We love your pet, even when they hate us. We honestly try to make them feel safe and comfortable. But what we have to do is scary and sometimes hurts. We don't think less of you as an owner when your pet is upset or gets aggressive. Please please tell us if your pet has been known to bite freak scratch at the vets. Seriously, I'm still gonna love and care for him. But now I have needed info to keep me and the rest of the staff safe. Anesthesia is dangerous. Routine procedure are still risky. We do everything we can to keep your pet safe. But sometimes bad things happen. As your pet gets older, we need to see them more often. We are better able to help normal aging issues if we catch them early. So yes, blood work and exams are super important in older pets. Fat pets are not cute. They are unhealthy. One of my saying is if this pet was as skinny as it is fat, we would call animal control. You are your pet's advocate. We trust that you know your pet's best. So if you think something is wrong, be the advocate. We need to hear you. Don't send your 16 year with your pet if they have no idea what's going on and no way to reach you. Same goes for spouse. Most states have laws requiring a valid patient owner doctor relationship before prescribing medications. So no, we can't refill your pet's ear medicines if we haven't seen them 2 years, even if you say he is having the exact same symptoms. Vets can lose their license. Please don't be mad at your 5 hour wait at the animal -er. Be glad your pet is a lower priority. Tridge isn't a game you want to win. We will happily take care of your pet's broken toenail. Once we stabilize the dog in heart failure, stop the puppy dropped on it head from seizing, and sew up the dog that got attacked by its housemate. I know waiting sucks, and to you, your dog is the most important, but we aren't sitting around doing nothing while you wait. We are trying to save the life of someone else's best friend. So much more. I really really love my job and the amazing pets and owners I privilege to work with every day. We are a team. We want to work with you, within your budget and level of comfort to provide the best possible care for your best friend. My hope is that you want the same thing, to be on the same team. Not a vet but a volunteer with a bird rescue. Parrots require a lot of work. Avian vets are super expensive. FFS don't pet your parrot anywhere but its head, otherwise you are masturbating them. It's not cute. They look happy because you are wanking them off. From my former vet tech girlfriend, don't leave your pets to be euthanized without you. It's hard to be there and it's hard to watch, but if you leave them they will die scared and looking for you. She had to try and comfort pets whose owners couldn't bring themselves to stay and it's one of the few things that makes her cry. Don't declaw your cats. It's basically like cutting the top of your finger off plus it can lead to infections. 5 years vet tech assist. 1. If your pet is scratching and we find flea dirt, then your pet has fleas. Just because you take one pet out for just a few minutes doesn't mean they can't get fleas. Accept it. Treat it. Prevent it. 2. Stop feeding table scraps. Pancreatitis sucks for everyone involved and is an expensive treatment. 3. Yes, we recommend heartworm prevention all year around. We are not in it for the money. We are in the south, it doesn't stay cold enough to keep the pests away. 4. Your clearly aggressive animal isn't cute behavior. Period. Your rabbit is not a freaking hamster. It needs actual space to run around, and not a single cage sold at a commercial pet store has even close to enough space. They need runs, and access to the house if you can. They are incredibly social animals, so don't come to me and say you got one. They are lonely, and need a buddy. If they don't have one, be prepared to spend 6 plus hours a day hanging out and socializing with them because they need the interaction. They do not just eat pellets. 80-90% of their diet is should be hay and I'm tired of people coming in with morbidly obese rabbits as a result of the rabbit being fed nothing but calorie dense pellets and carrots. And stop buying pugs from breeders. Bringing more of those poor suffering creatures into this world is inhumane. What anxiety actually looks like in animals, especially dogs, and how unfair it is to the animal. People don't know that yawning, side eye, lip licking, 
constant poor licking, etc. are signs of anxiety. That is your animal trying to speak to you and their surroundings that they aren't okay. Over time it can escalate when they aren't heard, up to biting. And the only way I can really intervene as a vet is some behavioral therapy but mostly through lifelong meds. Many clients hate giving anxiety meds because it is a daily commitment and or they don't believe it is a big deal. They don't think that their animal feels anxiety because they perceive the animal to have had a good life and what they do is just a quirk. Furthermore, if they stop some of the meds the animal will be chemically resistant when you try use them again like Prozac. Animals can't really go to a therapist like we can but also it's unfair to let them live in states of extreme anxiety. Think of those moments when you have a situation, or no obvious trigger, that you feel your stomach drop, you can't focus, and you have that sense of impending doom you can't shake. Animals feel that too. Also don't get me started on behavior misinformation. Dominance alpha theory, ignoring your animal when you come home leave, purposely switching up your routine so they can't tell you're leaving. All bulls. There are so many things, but I really want people to realize that while puppies are cute, they need appropriate socialization and training, especially when that cute puppy will grow up to be huge. I have seen many young dogs this year since COVID-19 has left many people with free time on their hands. They obviously aren't using this free time working on their pet's behavior though. Nothing like juvenile dogs who don't know how to walk on a leash will literally knock you down, or will just try to bite you if you get near them, or a young dog who is terrified of everything. Also, update your concept of training to this century please. No self-respecting behaviorist or trainer will use dominance theory or negative reinforcers like shock collars. Evidence-based research has shown as this is not the way. It breaks my heart when people take their dog to a trainer and it gets worse because of the methodology used. Not a vet, someone who would have been fricked if not for savings. If you can't afford pet insurance, see if you can afford half, or even a quarter of it. Save that half quarter in a bank account or a safe or something, and do not touch IT. That is your pet emergency fund. No, an emergency is not but that toy looks so cool, my pet would love it. An emergency is some evil sea kids let my pet out, and he got hit by a car. An emergency is I had to adopt my pet at 4 weeks old because he was in an unsafe environment, and his eyes were underdeveloped so he got conjunctivitis which turned into a deadly infection and he needed antibiotics for almost 2 months. An emergency is also my car broke down, now I can't afford my pet's vaccines. But it's fine, I have the emergency fund, aha vaccines matter. The only reason my dog is alive is because I had 600 pounds and savings I could use on him when emergency scenario A happened. As for B, I didn't have a fund for the guy yet, but at least I could afford his treatment which wasn't too expensive anyway. Save anything you can. Even 5 dollars pound symbol 5 slash year 5 slash whatever a week. I think your pet's life is more important than your pretentious and overpriced Saturday Starbucks drink, so if you have to give that up to save, so freaking be it. Am I thinking of a specific prick who chose Starbucks over a cat that died because the owner wasn't prepared? Yes I freaking am. Not a vet but my sister is. Vet care is not free. There are a crazy number of clients who think that vet care should be free because if they charge money they must hate animals and like to watch them suffer. Whoa, I rant about that so many times to my co-workers lol. 1. Having an obese pet is not cute. 2. Even if your pet is a darling at home, it still can bite me and you shouldn't judge me if I put on a muzzle. Even more if it's a big, angry dog cat. 3. Your pet has moods, just like a human. 4. Any change in behavior of your pet should be critically looked at. Why is it that your pet suddenly growls bites when you touch it in a special place? Could it have pain there? 5. I don't know how many times I said that but most people bring in their pet when it's too late. I had so many cases where I had to use much more expensive treatment cause Karen was too lazy to come here with her cat who obviously had a tumor. 6. I wish people would understand a pet is not a toy for your children you buy and stuff away whenever you're done with it. 7. It's not cool to make your dog into a killer machine. Especially if I, the vet, have to give it a shot etc. Yep, sometimes I highly doubt some people should be allowed to even own stuffed toys. Not a veterinarian, 
but I am a veterinary assistant. What people often think is an emergency really isn't an emergency and your pet will not die that night if we can't squeeze you in for a same day appointment. For example, if your dog has a minor ear infection, it's not gonna die if we tell you that our earliest appointment is next week and we don't have any more available slots for the current day, especially not when we're about to close in an hour. We had a client with a GS insist that our dog needed to be seen now because it was an absolute emergency and that our dog was completely, 100% non-ambulatory and that she, the dog, would need to be carried into the hospital via a stretcher. DR agreed to squeeze her dog in for an appointment during his lunch time. And guess what? The dog was walking fine and our doctor didn't find anything significant even with radiographs. On the flip side, I'm pretty sure my cat hasn't peed in 24 hours gets you bring him in now. My roomie is a great example of a crap pet owner. Her chihuahua pulled 19 teeth last summer because her jaw was rotting away. Something my roomie should have realized since the dog smells like death all the time. It's often for pizza crust or cat food. Dog also doesn't eat properly due to tooth decay. Yelps of pain from moving. Urinates and defecates indoors because it's only walked 15 minutes per day and the dog has developed stress behaviors such as separation anxiety, over grooming and scratching the same spot for hours. I managed to adopt her cat though, she was gonna put that one down because it was peeing on the laundry and scratched up the furniture, mainly because the cat didn't have a litter box or a scratch post. Yep, my roomie is a complete waste of a person. X vet tech dogs and pancreatitis it can happen by eating the wrong food once and it can kill an otherwise healthy dog within two three days for the love of god don't feed your dog table food one intake of the wrong food can potentially cause pancreatitis most people think that we rarely do it so it's okay to sneak some sausage to their dog during dinner no 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 one time can trigger it and it can be extremely deadly also hand in hand with this if your dog isn't eating or drinking water, it needs medical attention. Don't wait a few days if it isn't drinking or eating. It will get dehydrated and it may die. If they're limping straining clamping one eye shut they're in pain. They don't cry and whimper like we do. I'm not making up how serious heartworm disease is where I live in South Texas. Yes, even for cats. At least where I live, you won't dry out their hair coats by bathing them. Skin allergies are so prevalent here it actually really helps. You can socialize cats and acclimate them to carriers and car rides. I encourage you to do so. It'll make their and 20 year lifespan so much more enjoyable for both of you. Please don't declaw you cats and crop your dog's ears. Don't pay a backyard breeder to rescue a puppy or kitten from them. Q looks like I had a lot to unload here. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. for now.